Hello everybody, this is Sneaky the Lost, and today I'm coming to you from the Stardew Valley 1.1 beta. I've been doing some beta testing, bug hunting, uh, since I do run a Linux distro, obviously going to be pretty useful, not too many people do that, so anything I can pick up will just help anybody else on Linux um, be able to do their thing. So it is the seventh day of spring of the first year, I've been playing around on various different maps. This is the forest based map with the with the foraging specialties. So I just want to show you around the farm and uh, show you what you can anticipate. Now first off this is my initial farm plot here. You notice a lot less room to grow on. You've got a lot of this um, grass area that you cannot hoe up. Which is going to really limit your early game if you're not careful. Um, those of you who are familiar to my channel uh, may see that I've got this kind of setup that I typically do but that will go out um, in each direction two in each cardinal direction three wide so it ends up with like a five wide in the middle uh, for a total of 20 plots shaped like this so that I can put the sprinklers down I'm not able to do that right here so let's head directly over here. You'll see this is an area. Now the other thing about this area that's really cool, uh, let's go ahead and show it off right now. You can plant um, trees here. So that's cool. If you can plant fruit trees here, that would be even more cool. This would make a really nice orchard kind of area. If nothing else, a tree farm for, uh, you know, getting your oak resin for your kegs of course you have to be careful um, they uh, he, he doesn't allow you to uh, to be able to do stumps anymore haven't gotten this unlocked yet but this is going to be bog standard just like it always has been uh, this is where we are going to get our greenhouse eventually this is about the only area I'm aware of here and one other area down below where I can actually put my um, my 20 plot farm area uh, you'll notice over here that I kind of can sneak under this canopy it's kind of a diagonal angle here I'm not entirely too sure there's there's a lot more area but there is a blockage right along this row I'm not quite sure what that blockage is um, except I, I, I can't get rid of it with any of the, the things not sure if there's any other secrets around there or not, but this is a grandfather shrine. There's another one over here. As you can see here. And I can sneak out here. Now this is the first of the fo two foraging areas right here. Uh, as you can see, you've got these things. I did find some morels yesterday. I took some screenshots of that, posted it up on the forum. So you can go ahead and check that out in the, uh, the appropriate thread. But, um, so you are getting the secret forest forages here, which is good. That gives you a reliable source of morels in the spring. If you save those up, you can make your potions without needing to worry about uh, doing mushrooms in your cave. I'm betting these will regrow, um, most likely. Can't guarantee that, obviously, because I haven't gotten that far yet. I don't have a steel pickaxe yet on this one. Uh, and here is a second one, and you notice I kind of used this uh, little secret back door here. Uh, very fitting, befits the theme of this particular farm style. Uh, there's our, our way down to Cinder Snap Forest itself. Uh, another thing that will probably be immediately apparent, not only is there a lot more of this stuff, there's a lot more lakes and ponds in this one. Uh, if you'll notice, you know, you, you've got this big lake right here in the middle, or at least pond. I don't know what you'd want to call it here. Uh, cattle pond, I guess, it would be an appropriate term if you had cattle around here. But, um, but yeah, a lot more water here. A lot, lot less area to put stuff in. So you're really going to be cramped for space on this map. Um, definitely something to keep in mind. 
Alternate strategies, definitely orchards might be viable on this uh, area like this. So that would that would definitely be something. Of course, you can put all of your kegs and and preserve jars and everything on grass like this. Perfectly acceptable. Not going to be a problem for you here. So that might be another thing you can do with this kind of space to utilize it efficiently. Um, but yeah, and then as you go down here from the uh, from the greenhouse, uh, you'll get a little choke point here don't know if this is going to be wide enough for my purposes. Probably not, I'm guessing. Uh, and then here it opens back up a little bit. And this is where these big boulders are that you're going to need a steel pickaxe to break on through to the other side. Um, so that's really going to put a damper on expanding down here until you get a solid source of iron and can afford to do your um, pick upgrade. So that's really going to change a lot of how you're going to be looking at this map here um, and what you're really wanting to do with the map. <clears throat> uh, you do have access to the, the forges, however, you still are going to want that steel axe. Even though you have access to those forges, it's going to make the bundles eat the, the chef bundle easier because you can get your fiddlehead ferns here right at the beginning of summer. You don't have to rush that axe. However, once you do get that steel axe um, or even the copper axe for these stumps, uh, you're going to start rolling in hardwood if these things do start coming back periodically. Or um, still something needing to be uh, tested. So yeah, this is the first of five videos that I am going to be uploading so that everybody's got a sneak peek. Now, keep in mind, caveat, this is the beta for 1.1. It has not officially released yet, which means things can still change. So don't take it as gospel what you're seeing here. It can all change depending on what CA decides to do with his game. Um, however, you know, uh, looks uh, looks pretty awesome. If you are into the forging, if you are wanting forging, uh, I know personally I always have trouble getting forging six by summer. Um, those of you who have been watching my Let's Play well, no, I did manage it for the Let's Play. It was uh, middle of um, summer before I managed to get it. But more forages is more better. It'll get you there that much sooner. Also, if you get that copper axe soon, you can start getting a lot of hardwood for a lot of the upgrades that you're going to want to do. Uh, and a lot of machines as well. Uh, remember, those cheese makers require, what is it, uh... 10 hardwood each so yeah that gives you an opportunity of course stables are 100 hardwood that lets you get an early stables in here uh, which is gonna be really nice actually uh, there is the new buildings the uh, windmill actually is gonna cost you some cloth actually for cloth so that's kind of gated behind uh, Behind some research, be behind some uh, tech there. You know, you're you're gonna need to get some. Uh, you know, it's four cloth, not just one. So either you're gonna need to have to do a heck of a lot with your um, uh, spamming of your fishing and recycling for those newspapers, or you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and either grow a sheep or a rabbit. To be able to get there, so that's that's going to be gated towards later on, um, mid tier, I would say. Not not your first year building, unless you really want to rush it in the fall. Uh, the shed is about fifteen thousand gold and some wood. That's it. Done. So very very reasonably priced building. Haven't had a chance to drop it down yet. Obviously, just been the first week here. Uh, in game so don't know what that is going to have in store for us and how big it's going to be on the inside it is pretty big it's about the size of a slime hutch um, 
so uh, maybe I'll show that off in the next video um, you know when I show off the next plot I'll try and get up to uh, Robins in time to be able to show those off so uh, thanks for viewing everybody uh, this is Sneaky the Lost signing off